What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for tuning back in. I appreciate you coming back, and I am very sorry for the hiatus. I really haven't had any cars to review, so I, I, I apologize. But I'm back in a good car for you guys, and I picked a good one from National LAX. And today, I am in a 2022 Range Rover. Not the Sport, not the Velar, not the Evoque. Range Rover, Land Rover, Range Rover. Now I've driven this car for quite some time now and it definitely has some pros and cons. So I'm gonna get into that very quickly and you guys will see. Riding in the mother Rover. Talking down on oh no, yeah. Made a hundred plays in the fold. Getting into the pros, as you can see on the steering wheel, it is a very nice steering wheel. Much different than every other car that you I've ever reviewed, that's for sure. Even much different than a Maserati. And I would say, that's a huge pro. You got something different right here that you're going to look at and touch every single day. Another huge pro would be right here on the door, as you can see, you have multi-adjustable seats. So as you can see, this will adjust it forwards and backwards. Your legs will go forward and or back. This will push your butt forward, see as you can see, forward and backwards. And then this will adjust your back and your head. And since this is just ultra luxury, you have three seat settings instead of the two that you see in most luxury cars. And then this is how you adjust your back settings. So if you want your, your uh, lumbar settings to be pushing upwards, ba forwards, backwards, down, wherever you want it to be, that's where it'll be. And the biggest pro of all is just how nice this interior is. Although it's not the brand new Land Rover Range Rover, it is extremely nice. As you can see, it's still got the two screens. That is a pro, but also a con, and I will get into that later. And then looking at the rest of the car, as you can see, got some junk right there, sorry. You got some arm bars right there, a little bit more junk right there, and then some boots and some more stuff in the back. No third row, although this is a very big SUV, you do have plenty of space for the backseat passenger. Now, getting into the steering wheel, as you can see, all these buttons are much different than you would see, like I said earlier, on your standard cars. Now, if you want to click menu, if you click in the middle of this button, that'll change this button to that. That is pretty neat. So now it only uses these. And then you can scroll left and right on your menus right there. If you're on a phone call, as you can see right here, that is a phone call decline button and then that's the phone call answer button. So basically when you're on a phone call, this phone will turn green and then the phone decline button will turn red. So it's easy to answer and decline a call. This is your cruise control set plus and minus and your resume, your heated steering wheel, your speed limit, your lane keep, and your cancel. Very simple on that side. Now you might be wondering what this diamond button does and so am I, so let's click it. Oh, something pops up right here. That's your favorite button. Select cu customizable steering wheel function button. Button function. Whoops. And that's about it for the steering wheel. As you can see, it is very nice. You got a little hand rest right here, or if you want to hold it like so, you can hold it like so, underneath, like so. Boom. It has plenty of spots for you to put your hand in. I'd say it's pretty nice. Getting onto the doors, this is how you change the windows. If you want to move them down, they're all automatic. As you can see, this window is going all the way down. And then let's stop it like that. And then you just click it up. It is a very soft button. It's very nice, definitely very luxurious. Mirror settings are right here. If you want to change your left, you just click down, see how it turned yellow. If you want to change your right, click down, see how it turned yellow. And then your mirror, if you want your mirrors to turn in and all your other settings right there. Very simple. Obviously there are a million screens. As you can see, your screen right here your screen right here and then my most controversial screen of them all is right here and I will tell you why so when this car turns off the screen is completely black so if this screen goes out on you holy guacamole this thing is gonna cost a fortune to replace because this this literally does all your climate controls like so your seat controls like so your vehicle controls like so and your settings like so you definitely do not want to lose this screen so if you're looking to buy an older one i would pray to god that this screen doesn't break on you because i cannot imagine how expensive it is and the flickering is not happening on my screen it's probably just because it's a lcd or 
LED or whatever it is that makes stuff flicker. And a little bit different than most cars that you drive, the start stop button is right here next to all your vents, as you can see. Kind of an odd place to put it, but it's not bad. It's something a little bit different and every luxury car is gonna be a slight bit different. And then moving over to the glove compartment, as you can see, if you click this button down right here, that flops down your glove compartment. But if you click up, listen, nothing. Just makes a clicking noise. So you gotta manually put it back up. I don't know why you'd have an up button there, but kind of odd. Now, as you can see also, there are a million speakers in this car. You got one, two, you got one right here. That is definitely a huge speaker. You got a speaker right there. It looks like you have a speaker right here and right there and right there and right there. And I think that's all a speaker right there, or that might be just an airbag. I don't know, but it looks, it's definitely perforated. Now, a couple of my cons that I would say for being such a luxurious car, as you can see, hi, this thing is not very nice. Let's get it off the thing. So now we just moved it off. Now you would expect most cars can just pull out. So if you want it to go further out to block this little portion of your your window, it will do that. This does not do that. You're spending $100,000 on a car that can't do that. But on a Pro, as you can see, this is leather wrapped. Much nicer than pretty much any car you're probably ever gonna drive. And another con that I would say is right here. This is a armrest, but it's really, really small. I don't really know how else to explain it. it it's like if I had really scrawny shoulders. Um, I know, Land Rover, Range Rover, and uh, Jaguar, you know, it's, that's a Tata Motors brand. Obviously, that's owned by an Indian company. And I would not say that I typically see Indians that are very, very scrawny. So I don't know what that is about, but I mean, hey, I, it's there. It is kind of nice, but it's definitely not as comfortable as just putting your arm on the center console. So getting into the rest of the buttons, as you can see, Right here is your gear selector. All you gotta do is just twist it and that will change it to park, reverse, neutral, drive, and sport. This is all your climate controls. Like I said earlier, you just twist it if you wanna turn it hotter or colder. And then if you want your seat warmers to go on, you just click the button in. There's your seat warmer settings. It is very cool, but like I said, this controls so much in the car. If this breaks, you're screwed. And then moving underneath all of that is your traction control off button and what looks to be uh, to raise your suspension, to lower your suspension, uh, maybe like an off-road button. And then if you're going downhill, I'm sure you click that button right there. The middle button comes out like so. And I can't tell you what that does. Nothing happens in my car. And your parking is brake right there. Underneath this, our cup holders, sorry it's dirty, I spilled some Red Bull in there earlier. And then if you move that, you got more storage underneath there with a 12 volt charger. Simple as that. You go inside of your center console here, click open, you got a little bit of space right there for let's say your wallet. You got another 12 volt charger right there, an SD card slot right there, micro SIM slot. So if you want to put um, your card to have cellular service, you can do that. And then two USB A's and plenty more storage down there. You do have a sunroof right here. And obviously this controls if you wanna open act the actual sunroof and this just controls if you wanna open the blind. Here's a look at the sunroof, obviously massive. Stretches out almost to the back of the car. Very, very big. As you can see, the passenger has all the fancy buttons as well. Also, they have that arm rest as well. One extra feature that I did not notice is, right here is a light that will control, you know, this is the back, by the way, we're looking at the back seat right now. This is a light that controls, you know, up here. You got your lights right there. And you got your light for reading, this is for your laptop, that's for reading. And this button right here, I'm like, what the heck is that? Let's take a look. Click that button. Ha. Control your sunroof. Pretty cool. You can close it right back up. Don't let your kids have this car. Also, back seats adjust. Not like the fronts, but they adjust. Pretty cool. And just for shits and gigs, here's the back seat buttons. Nothing too crazy. 
Got two chargers down here too. With their own separate tow volt chargers. Impressive. And it has soft closed doors. Take a look. Let's just get it close. Nope, not close enough. There we go. Completely closed. Don't have to click them that hard. Now my initial impressions of this car were not impressed, not even in the slightest. For being w well over $100,000 MSRP, not impressed. And the reason I say that is because it wasn't really driving that smooth uh, on pretty bumpy roads. Um, I was expecting a car of this caliber to be just driving like a, like a land yacht everywhere, just nice and smooth, smooth sailing everywhere. But it, it was not, it, that is not, that was not the case, not even in the slightest. But once I got on the highway, that's when I saw why people drive these cars. They, it is just so smooth. I have, I really don't have anything to compare it to. The Maserati wasn't even close. Um, there's really no luxury car that I've ever driven that is nearly as smooth as this one. I will give credit where credit is due. These cars are actually pretty smooth. You really feel like you're you're driving a boat. It's huge, it's smooth, and look at these big cushions right here. I mean, it's just the, the comfiest car to drive, truly. It's a very comfy seat, a very comfy ride. Besides when you're on bumpy roads, then it's basically like every other car out there. But on highways, that's when you really see how great these things are. Now, it is definitely not the fastest car on the road by no means, but it, it is plenty quick. Um, it sounds like it has a turbo. I will check myself on that. I could be com completely wrong. Maybe it's just a whining noise that, uh, or whistling noise that isn't supposed to be there. But hey, it, it may, if it's there, then cool. But I'll put some specs on the screen um, on w w what's completely up with this car, how fast it is, horsepower, torque, you know, all those little numbers that you guys like to see. And what can I really say? I'm driving a Range Rover. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. Here we are. And it's, it's just awesome. The, these cars are very, very nice. I really don't have too much else to say besides it's extremely smooth. It's pretty quick, not, not the fastest on the road. And the little features on the inside are just really cool. One other feature I didn't tell you is right here, when you turn off the car, this will sink into the, if, you know, I guess if I push down, it won't go down, but this will sink in. And then when you, when you turn on the car, this will pop right back out. It's a pretty cool little feature. But other than that, I appreciate you guys watching this. It truly means a lot for you guys sticking on my side. Uh, I, once again, I'm really sorry for the hiatus and uh, more videos coming soon. I got plenty more trips planned. Uh, next week I'll be in Cleveland. This week right now I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, the week after that, you know, I, who, who knows? But you, I, I am booked up until I have maybe more five more flights. So make sure you catch me on the next ones. I'll probably have some cool cars. If not, I will be reviewing your mom's favorite car, Toyota Corolla, just kidding, or a RAV4. Just kidding. Uh, I don't really know. I would be reviewing like a more basic car. So let me know if you liked what I did. If I missed anything on this Range Rover, I only had it for two days. So I apologize if I missed every little feature. Um, let me know down below. Have a good one and stay till the end for some hand selected music by me. <laughs>